tricky times. And I read in the Tottenham Times last week that a lot of people come up to you and say, you should start a political party, you should start a bank, you should start an energy company. Yeah. And basically, you offer it back to them, saying, well, why don't you and your local communities start these, start these mm. things? Last night I came across Transition Streets YouTube video in which um, a large number of people in various parts of town are getting together, meeting, talking about any re energy reduction and but getting actually to become better neighbours to each other. And at first they thought this might be a bit dry, talking about energy. But then they just get into meeting and knowing each other and supporting each other and looking out for each other when they're ill. And this is about just regenerating communities. Yeah, I mean, that's the most extraordinary thing about Transition Street. Is that, you know, and it was designed as a way of reducing carbon. The whole idea was how do you reduce carbon in a way that's more effective than the government just sending you a leaflet or a DVD. And actually maybe if it works on a street by street level, people getting together with their neighbours and so on, then maybe that's a different way of doing it. And so there's about 700 households now in top who've done it. And on average they've reduced their carbon emissions by about 1.3 tonnes a house, which they save themselves about yeah. 600 pounds. But when I meet people who've done it, no one ever mentions the carbon <laughs> savings at all. Everybody says, oh, uh, I now know Dave over the road, and I know Sheila down the other end of the street, and we're doing this together. And yeah. A lot of those groups had so much fun meeting that they carried on meeting when they finished the programme and doing other stuff. So one of them out at Fullerton started a community cinema, one of them uh, started a community orchard, and people have done all kinds of different stuff. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and the nice thing about it as well is that it's, is that it's spread out beyond, beyond Tottenham. So there's quite a few places doing it now. And then was, I was reading a story the other day from Newcastle in Australia where they're doing transition streets. And uh, it was like reports from each of the streets and what they were up to. And it's just fantastic. Mm. It's, just, it's just this combination of living in a way that consumes less energy and that is more orientated around the community can be a better future rather than just this horrible picture of austerity that people... Um, get into a fearful place mm. around. I mean, there's nobody who's done transition streets who said, uh, I use less energy and my quality of life is uh, seriously depleted for having done so. <laughs> you know, no. everybody, it's a win-win-win-win-win. It's a win, 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 win. Uh, yes, yeah, systemic you know. win would be my friend Paul yeah. Baker's yeah. phrase. Exactly. Yeah. And, that, and, and that's, that's what we need to be seeing more, I think. And transition streets is a great example. And mm. the way in which transition can work, because there are so many initiatives across the UK and elsewhere, the way that we can roll out uh, things that work, like you know, like a network of research and development units. One, mm. one transition initiative comes up with something that works, like draft busters that was developed in one of the London groups, like uh, garden share that was developed here. You know, those things can just spread all over the place. It's great. So, I mean, to be heading this movement must sometimes feel like a responsibility, not only because people say, can you do this, can you do that, can you do the other? But, <coughs> I mean, the size of this change that you are contemplating would personally stretch me massively and I would feel depleted spiritually from time to time no matter how many um, good good stories there were around about what people are doing. I'm, I'm just intrigued about being able to take on an agenda this big and how you draw the resources together to keep at the, to keep at the head of that. Well, I think it's not... The idea isn't that I do everything. Mm. And it's not just me. You know, there's other people who are around and involved and on board and supported Transition Networks, about 10 people now. So it's mm. fantastic. Sort of You've been leading on books, though. I mean, yeah. the Transition Handbook, The Power of Just Doing Stuff, there's one other as well. There's the Transition Companion as the well. The Transition Companion. But I think the thing is, often when people look at Transition and assume that, that somehow I do everything or I've set everything up, you know. And actually, mm -hmm. all the Transition groups around the world, I don't do all that stuff. Brixton Pound, Bristol mm. Pound, Brixton Energy. That's other people who do those things. My role sure. is really that sort of central, I'm kind of storyteller-in-chief, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, you'll, <laughs> you'll, you'll get, you'll get more calls from the media than other, than, than other people will, and yeah. sometimes you'll refer the media on to the other people yeah. so that they but get the stories from the crowd. I do a lot of sort of finding out what people are up to and finding, telling those stories in books or in films or online or whatever. So I'm still trying to get to, at times... Do you wish there wasn't this challenge that you were that you were facing, along with all the others? Do you sometimes just want to step back, and how do you come forward again with new energy? Do you, do you have any issues around your personal energy on I'm this campaign? I'm quite kind of boundaried about time. 
okay. so that this doesn't take over my every waking hour. Your family life is really my important to me. My family life is really well. important to me. So mm -hmm. I, never, I pretty much never work on weekends. Mm -hmm. and, I, I'm, and I try and be home by a spy every day. I don't want to be one of those dads who's, you know, your kids kind of remember you occasionally passing through the house. Right. That's kind of really important. Um, and I garden, which helps a lot to sort of switch off. Mm. I don't know, I think anybody who does this work, particularly around climate change, you know, you have to kind of... I remember Paul Hawken saying, someone asked him at some talk he gave whether he was an optimist or a pessimist, and he said, if you, if you, if you, if you read the climate science and you're not a pessimist, go back and read it again, <laughs> you haven't read it properly. Yeah. And if you've engaged... Two degrees is almost inevitable, right? Yeah, in so yeah. Yeah. But if you... But if you've engaged with the movement of people around the world who are doing something about it, and you are not an optimist, then you haven't got a heart. Right. And I'm kind of with that, really. You know, I sort of just flip between those two regularly. Mm. Uh, and, I mean, it feels to me like, actually, like with anything, there's no certainty, there's no guarantee, there's no, there's no, I mean, we may well mm. not do this. Yeah. But this feels to me like the most appropriate thing to be doing at this time. You, you, uh, bring, you bring something back to mind, if you don't mind the inter interruption. You and I were both at an event um, with Joanna Macy at Finn yeah, Finn Finn yeah. Because she said, whether it's the, um, the, the death throes of, the, of a civilization and we're, we're, we're there doing a mourning process, or whether we're giving birth to a new consciousness and a new, and a new era, the skills and attitude we need to bring are the same, the same. They are about yeah. compassion and caring for those around us. Absolutely. I mean, that for me, I suppose in the early days of transition when we started it off, uh, and motivated initially by a sort of peak oil, dark night of the soul, kind of, oh my God, moment, the only stuff you could find then really online, such as it was, the internet at that stage about peak oil, was great hairy guys up in... Um, Nebraska wow. heading up into the mountains with four years worth of baked beans and toilet paper and a shotgun. You know? Yeah, there was and that. I think, yeah. And I think what Transition brought was a compassionate response, was framed as a compassionate response, was framed mm. as how do we, what does it look like if we, if, if we, if we use this as an opportunity to come closer together mm -hmm. rather than to fragment further apart. And so that, that sort of compassionate motivation has really underpinned Transition from the start, I think. So to round off, could you suggest a next step for people in Totnes to join the movement in a more active in a more active way? Well, there's have a look at the website transitiontotnes.org. There's loads of events with mm -hmm. regular kind of program of events from more kind of you know, talks or whatever and films to skill shares where there's loads of the people in this town who have a skill they want to offer and share for free for the day whether it's how to sharpen your tools or how to build a shed or whatever uh, you know, there's, uh, how to use your computer better you know, there's all these things that are up and running all the time um, get involved you know, it's a process that needs everybody behind it and everybody on board otherwise you know, I mean, that's, that's really the idea so, yeah, there's all kinds of ways you can get involved there's some great practical projects up and running there's community garden projects there's transition homes looking to build 25 affordable houses on the edge of town there's the Atmos project which is trying to bring the former Dairy Crest site run station into community ownership and is, is getting very close. There's Tottenham's Renewable Energy Society, you know, get involved with that. There's all kinds of stuff going on, you know, but, it, but it's not going to happen by magic. It needs people to put their shoulder to it and help make it happen too. Sure, and it also simply involves people connecting better with their neighbours and saying, how can we make things better around here without depleting the environment in any, yeah, in there any was, way? Yeah, it was a fantastic one of the... One of the Kind of privileges of what I do is I get to sort of get sent a lot of the emails and news stories and what's happening around the world. And there was a news article from Vancouver about transition in Vancouver. And uh, at the end of it, the woman who had set up transition in Vancouver was asked, "So how would you, how do you explain transition in a few words to people who, who ask what it's about?" She said, uh, "Meet your neighbours, see what happens." <laughs> I thought, what a fantastic sort of founding. Uh, <laughs> Founding principle for uh, an economic renaissance. Mm. <laughs> well, it's been a, a pleasure to meet you as potentially a new neighbour if I moved to, to Tottenham. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you.